here's what I've been working on. Uh, let's uh, hope that the tech holds out. It was a little bit buggy just a minute ago, but I think I fixed the bug. We'll see in a second. Um, so, yeah, this is it. It's a corridor, and it winds and unwinds towards the player. Now we can go back this way, or we can go the other way. We can go whichever way we so desire. Um, and that is literally it. It's also infinite. Um, it just keeps emitting on both ends um, as part of the, the winding function. Um, yeah, that's essentially most of it. If I press play, you can see is these winding things it literally just emits and rotates based upon the uh, position of the player it's very very costly you definitely don't need uh, I'm currently making 300 copies uh, yeah you could you could you could like have 100 that would be fine like that's that's definitely enough, I think. Especially if you had uh, obstacles in here to uh, obscure the exits or some fog or something. Um, yeah, that's that's basically how it works. There's a couple of other things I'll just briefly show off. Uh, this is the rotation factor. So we divide the distance from the block to the player by 400. If we divide it by less, let's say 100, then the rotation happens faster. Which does look very, very trippy. But uh, because of the size of the blocks, um, it looks a bit weird with the gaps. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I like how fast it rotates. It does look really cool. Um, and then, of course, you, you have the inverse. We can make this like a thousand um, and, and play that. And it's a really gentle rotation, um, but again, it, it's almost it's trippy in the in the other sense, in the inverse sense. Um, ignore that block; that's the starting block. Um, it, it's almost like it doesn't appear to be rotating at all, but it definitely is because the end is rotated, um, and that's that's quite an interesting concept to play around with. Um, we can also do different things with the. Uh, way that it rotates. So at the moment we've got it rotating. Um, let's change this back to let's do 300. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's rotating clockwise. Uh, so you can see it's coming along here, and then the rotation continues this way. Um, now that's not something that happens by default, but if I unclip some of these and then run it you can see that it turns one way and then reaches the player and turns back the other way. So that's possible to do. Uh, what I'm doing here is, as that's the default state, I'm actually checking for whether this one is a positive or negative distance and then uh, doing the inverse of this timeline to rotate. Um, and you can obviously invert that one as well. You could uh, multiply this calculator by minus one and that would give you the uh, opposite uh, of that left to right, right to left. You would get uh, right to left, left to right. Uh, yeah, and that's essentially most of the tech. We do a comparison to check uh, what rooms are where, do some trigger zones to, to see what's happening, emit some stuff. If it's too far away, we destroy it. Compare the distances between stuff. Uh, this is our lookout rotator. We're giving it a... Uh, um, a directional vector here, which is uh, interpolated smoothly by the timeline. Really, really handy, really easy tech. Um, there's definitely a cheaper way of doing this than the timeline, uh, which I may look into using sine and cosine. But yeah, that's that's what I've been working on. It's just a little little demo project. It looks cool.